Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 243. My name is Daniel White III, here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates as some foolishly have done. However, it is all about preparation. First, today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today, according to the Associated Press, Israeli warplanes flew over southern Lebanon on Friday, two days after Israel launched an airstrike near Damascus. Syria's army chief of staff warned against testing his country's capabilities and said Syria will never change its stance, no matter how much the enemy carries out provocative and hostile acts. The Israeli air raid raised tensions in a region already boiling as a result of Syria's 22-month civil war. Second today, according to Yahoo News, the Pacific Ring of Fire has been active over the past few days and has produced four strong earthquakes. North Central Chile was the first to feel the ring's wrath as a magnitude 6.8 earthquake erupted and was felt up to 370 miles away from the epicenter. The Solomon Islands in the South Pacific were next as two strong earthquakes registering at magnitude 6.0 and 6.2 shook the islands. Finally, a magnitude 6.0 earthquake shook an already battered region along the southern tip of Alaska. These earthquakes occurring in relatively quick succession Uh, separated by distances of thousands of miles, punctuates just how active the ring of fire is and just how unpredictable it can be. Third today, according to the Jerusalem Post, a Saudi Arabian newspaper has reported that the Syrian regime has transferred non-conventional weapons to Hezbollah, quoting unnamed sources from the Syrian opposition. The paper said that President Bashar Assad has been transferring weapons to Hezbollah since the beginning of 2012, including two tons of mustard gas and long-range missiles capable of carrying chemical warheads and traveling over 180 miles. The Syrian opposition said the transfer went on for 40 days. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse Verses 3 and 4, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. 
Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the future. Our topic for today is titled, The Southern Army, Part 4, from Dr. John MacArthur's fine book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. While the Antichrist, he goes on to say, is in Egypt, conquering all the territory he can get, he receives some agitating news. Daniel 11.44 says, But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Whatever these tidings are, they involve a whole lot of people coming with a big army. I believe this is the army of the east. Now the fact that this army is said to come from the east and the north may either mean that it is split into two forces, one coming straight at Jerusalem and the other coming down from the north, or it may refer to a single army coming from the northeast. Either way, the Antichrist hears that a great power is converging from the east. Notice how he sets his defense. Verse 45 reads, And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas, the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea, in the glorious holy mountain, Mount Zion. In other words, he plants himself back in Jerusalem. But the Bible continues, Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. If the Lord should tarry his coming, uh, we will begin looking at the army of the east on our next broadcast. Now in closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19.13 to occupy till I come. <clears throat> Please listen to the following from Charles H. Spurgeon on how to remain confident in the Lord's return. He said, I do not wish you to be shaken in mind so as to act fanatically or foolishly as certain people did in America when they went out into the woods with ascension dresses on so as to go straight up all of a sudden fall into none of those absurd things that have led people to leave a chair vacant at the table and to put an empty plate because the Lord might come and need it, and try to avoid all other superstitious nonsense, to stand stargazing at the prophecies with your mouth wide open is just the wrong thing to do. Far better will it be to go on working for your Lord, getting yourself in your service, ready for his appearing and cheering yourself all the while with this thought. While I am at work, my master may come. Before I get weary, my master may return. While others are mocking at me, my master may appear. And whether they mock or applaud is nothing to me. I live before the great task master's eyes and do my service, knowing that he sees me and expecting that by and by he will reveal himself to me, and then he will reveal me and my right intention to misrepresenting men. That is the first point, brothers and sisters. The Lord will come. Settle that in your minds. He will come in his own time, and we are always to be looking for his appearing. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to live our lives in such a way that, Lord, we are ready when you come. Help us not to act foolishly uh, and stop working for you and just sitting down and waiting on you. Help us work while we still have an opportunity to do so for your kingdom, for your glory, for your praise and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved friend, if you're listening to this broadcast, to this podcast, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God wants you to receive Jesus Christ before he returns. Please understand that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned, including myself, and 
and come short, and we all have come short of the glory of God. Please also understand that because of your sins, you deserve eternal punishment in hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. Now that is bad news, but I have some good news for you. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This verse is telling us that despite our sinfulness, God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to suffer and die on the cross for your sins and mine. After he died on the cross, he was buried and rose again. Now all you have to do is believe in him, trust in him, and have faith in him for your salvation. If you do so, you will not suffer eternal punishment in hell. Rather, you will have eternal life in heaven with God. And that's a fact. The Bible also says in Romans ten nine and 13, dear friend, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, dear friend, if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, and you want to invite him into your heart today, please pray with me this simple prayer and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Bible, you are now saved from hell and you are on your way to heaven, and the devil cannot stop you. Welcome to the family of God. I want to congratulate you on receiving Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospelightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Remember the words of the Lord in Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator, when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus, God bless you. Listen everybody to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day.